off base and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of hell, too sweet to be sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I am Pat Riley. This is a good night to reflection of perfection, the number one selection. And uh, today <laughs> we are joined by uh, one of my favorite comedians in the city of LA. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Julia Loken. Yeah. I'm there so- you go. Hello. Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure if that was going to be the answer or if it was going to be a trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said one of my favorite it's not comedians. You. <laughs> 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 nope. That's, uh, that's, that's. It's me. It's you. Uh, we, uh, uh, Pat, actually, before we even get into it, Pat uh, brought me a present. I'm so excited. Uh, so you went down to the uh, El Segundo Brewing Company. Yeah. Yeah. By uh, right in the shadow of LAX. <laughs> <laughs> next Gorgeous. To those, next to those, uh, yeah. Candy cane smokestacks down there. Oh, not even that. It's like the 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 hangers for random B level airlines and <laughs> All stuff. The, the places where you go to do the market surveys. Yeah, yeah, for exactly. Or, and things yeah, like. or even or even like the places where all the illicit deals go down, where it's like the smuggling, where it's like, oh, you go to Swiss Port Airport. Oh, so it's the end of heat. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pick up the boxes and the. Uh, <laughs> You tell them it is stuffed toys, but really. It- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, uh, pick me up, and uh, you know we are not being uh, being paid in any way. Although if uh, if El Segundo would like to uh, endorse this show and make us our own uh, beer, we'd yeah. love it. But uh, Pat got me a bottle of uh, Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA. Yeah, and uh, I am excited. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually open this uh, live on live on the air here. Yeah, <laughs> are you gonna pour most of it on your face the proper yeah, way you're yeah, supposed I mean, to drink well, any? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he so, couldn't even drink a beer proper. Properly stone cold. He spilled <laughs> half of the damn thing before it got to his mouth. Here we go. Here, here we go. Oh, buddy. Oh, mm. I was expecting that to be very anticlimactic, oh, but no. that yeah. really did have a crisp, I was expe- I was a crisp expect- open. I want to <laughs> smoke a cigarette after we open that thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was half expecting it to go half words on the control panel there. You know what? Here's the thing, and I I, uh, I am not a big IPA fan, but that is really good. That is, I mean, I was gonna drink this anyway because it's Stone Cold, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like when he announced, he was just like, "I'm having my own beer. Yeah. Gonna come out with an, an an India Pale Ale." I was like, "Oh, oh, come on, make it a stout, brother." But I'm into hops. I don't, I don't think a stout would be a Stone Cold beer. <laughs> that, yeah, that'd be the Andre the Giant beer, or the, yeah, it, I yeah. feel like he he, he seems more. I guess IPA even seems a little crafty for him. Yeah. Like yeah. a little too high class. Andre yeah. almost seemed to me like a Merlot type. Yeah. I guess, well, yeah, he's French. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But no, I mean, but it has to be good for mass quantities of drinking. Yeah. Because I don't know, like, I can understand how his body could, like, deal with processing 162 beers in an hour. I know. Yeah. Cold but how do you fit Andre? But I don't know how he could have drank that much. Yeah. Like unless he had an IV, like pumping it into his his arm or something. Well, it's probably slightly exaggerated. You no, know, there's a lot of kayfabe and exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't want to break kayfabe on this beer right now, but it's probably just a licensed name and not actually brewed in Stone Cold's bathtub. <laughs> no, he actually made that point where he's just like he's like, I got a lot of. Got a lot of bullshit from people on Twitter <laughs> saying, Stone Cold, you're not a brewer. I never claimed to be a brewer. I just came in and said, this is the kind of beer that Stone Cold Steve Austin would like to put his name on. I was- but all these dumbasses <laughs> saying that I'm a brewer. Being a brewer requires time and learning. Stone Cold yeah. sitting at a little desk being infuriated by the internet is like the funniest thing ever. Like, I would love to hear his just notes on the beer if he was involved in the process <laughs> along the he, way. Well, no, no, I think he, he interviewed, uh, he has his, Stone Cold has a podcast, by the way. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's fucking great because it's just him like applying that Stone Cold energy that he yeah. used to apply to wrestling to just real life. So he's like bitching about the parking lot at Trader Joe's and shit like I that. I love it. It's yeah. the best. And he actually, he did interview, I think, the president or whatever yeah. of the company and they talked the about how master. they... The brewmaster. Yeah. I want something with passion fruit the, notes. Give yeah, me a hell like yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. It is passion fruit. I was yeah. like, it oh, does have like an interesting... Are you like, kidding me? He really puts sissy things like that <laughs> in his beer? Yeah. But it's it's funny on the, on the, on the, on the, on the podcast because his delivery when he rants about things it sounds a lot like Brody Stevens <laughs> where he's just like 
You know, you got to work that J-O-B. Went to college. North Texas. Played football. Texas football. Working running on a back. Dock. Yeah, working on a lowering dock. Working on that forklift. I can do surgery on a forklift. Give me the problem. Give me the forklift. I can fix it. Yes. Positive energy. Lone Star State till I die. Positive yeah. energy. Actually, you know, speaking 2. of the Lone Star 7 State. 2.7 GPA. <laughs> Graduated <laughs> North Texas, <laughs> Mean Green. <laughs> are, you, are you from Texas? I am not from Texas. There, I don't think anybody in here is from Texas, but there's a lot of Texas paraphernalia in the room right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rebels we is got wearing a, his we Luke got a Luke and Bach over yeah. here. We're I have my Longhorns hat. Are you uh -huh. from, wait, you're not from Texas. <laughs> I'm right? from the fourth dimension. <laughs> but this wow. hat was got for me by Rivers mm -hmm. at the actual <laughs> stadium with the Longhorns oh, kick Luke ass. Yeah, yeah. I'm not from Texas, but my best friend uh, growing up, her family was from Texas. Oh, okay. Uh, so I know I know a fair amount. I also performed at a bowl game where the Longhorns played. What? Did they yeah. win? I don't think so. It was my fault. Did you I, jinx them? <laughs> what, what did you perform? Um, Were you in I like danced. A, oh, I danced. Okay. I was. I danced in high school and I was on the high school dance team, but I was also on like a like a youth or like an outside a studio team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was part of this larger organization that had studios across the country, uh -huh. and they would have every year. And they do the same thing with like uh, cheerleading and yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff at like the uh, uh, Macy's Day Parade. But they would have a bowl game that you could you would learn a separate dance, and people from all over the country from those studios would like learn that dance yeah. and then you'd get together like two days before and you'd perform and this one you had like flags that you had yeah, to yeah. twirl and like the ages range from like elementary school to seniors in high school so there's like little kids that are being yeah. cute in the front yeah. but since you're old and not cute you have to stand in the back but they had like <laughs> pyrotechnics going off and the only thing I remember is just being like this is so fucking hot was this was like, this in the pregame show or? no it, was, it, it couldn't have been halftime because it was, also wasn't like a big bowl was game. it like the it was like car Pacific, care bowl yeah, yeah it was the Pacific Life Bowl or something it was in <laughs> yeah, San Diego yeah. and well, that's well, the we holiday went. bowl yeah. Yeah. yeah it, oh, yes. There we go. Yeah. The oh, you're familiar. Or the, or the Ponce. <laughs> it's either the Holiday Bowl, or the Poinsettia Bowl. I'm not it's quite sure. I think Holiday Bowl sounds. Yeah, it's a Holiday Bowl. Right. They uh, have a Poinsettia Bowl. Yeah. Uh, it seems they like have they all would, the bowls. <laughs> seems all like yeah. They bowls. have like the, the Meineke Car Care Bowl, the Beef O'Brady's Bowl, the Cheerios <laughs> Bowl. What's the? There's a Fritos one. What's well, that? That's actually oh, kind of a bigger one. Yeah. That's a Tostitos Rose Bowl. There we go. That's a Fiesta Bowl. The Fiesta Bowl. That fits well in a bowl too. So that really works. Yeah. I feel like all the Poinsettia in the Poncea Bowl would get in the way of the football. Yeah, though. exactly. you got to keep them away from the cats, though, because yeah. they will nibble on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and anything served in a bowl at a Beef O'Brady's is lethal, so... <laughs> Is that like a chain? Yeah, yeah in Florida, thing. it's a chain. There yeah. was a there. I grew up like twenty minutes north of here, and there's this place that has it's by Magic Mountain. Uh huh. Uh, and there's like a shopping center that has a restaurant. There's been an El Torito there forever, yeah. and a Red Lobster forever. But there's this third location that's always changing, and it was a Beef O'Brady's for like a week. But I was like, <laughs> yeah. that, I that can't be a thing because that's the worst it's name. The worst name oh, it's, place. Yeah, and the food there is lethal. Yeah. So you you grew up in uh, in uh, Valencia. Valencia. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, real real quick, I did want to talk about this real quick because uh, Julie and I yes. actually uh, with a there was a bunch of other comics went to see uh, John Prine and Jason Isbell mm -hmm. uh, and Amanda Shires. Let's not forget and Amanda ladies. Shires. Can yeah. I, can I ask a cool question? Yeah. Who yeah. are any of those people? <laughs> so, uh, John, uh, John Prine, uh, if you don't know, is a singer songwriter. Or really. did you mean the comics that were with? Him? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Who they, I thought these were actors oh. or something. No, John John Prine is a uh, singer songwriter. He uh, put out. Uh, you know, still puts out records. He's he's amazing. Uh, and uh, then Jason Isbell and his wife Amanda Shires play together. Favorite favorite singer songwriters going at the moment. Point is, we mm -hmm. it's it's folk music. It's like Americana kind of country folk. That's sort of the genre. And uh, John Prine in particular, Jason Isbell and John Prine kind of have this in common where they uh, have the ability to write. You know, very like funny but also very sad songs. And there's there's a, there was a point. The, the whole night while we were sitting there, this was at the uh, at the Greek theater just down the street. Uh, we're sitting there, and whenever they were playing, they would play a song, and there would be a, sort of a quiet moment for a minute. This fucking guy who I could, I was, I, I did you get to, did get to see him? No. Okay, so I, I was sitting on the edge, so I could actually look down and see the guy. He was sitting there. He was double fisting Bud Light Tall Boys, yes. and he was just wearing like. <laughs> He's just wearing like red shorts and a t-shirt with two Bud Light Tall Boys. And anytime there was a, any quiet at all, you would just go, Woo! John motherfucking Prime! 
<laughs> this is like a 70 year old man who's singing like sad love songs and well, this and man like, this fucking <laughs> asshole yeah Brad! well it's also like a la show where most of the people in the audience are just like well to do right. like baby boomers yeah 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 who are just like <laughs> quietly it's because it's at the greek you're sitting the whole time no one's yeah. standing up and yeah. cheering people are just clapping politely and right, it's, right. it's john prine you know, too so it's yeah. like it presumes that you have a college education yes exactly yeah. you know you know about uh like this more esoteric uh folk subsect of music but yeah, yeah. i just like it because there's a free bird guy at every show it's, it's that. All I know is I know who I want to sit beside if I went to the yeah, show. Yeah, it's that guy. I, and guy you know what? I'll tell you something else. That guy probably was enjoying that show more than anybody who oh, brought a picnic. I could see yeah. him. He definitely I, was. I love, he sounded like he was having a damn good time. Well, and the other thing he kept yelling was he would go, he would say, John motherfucking Prine. He would go, woo. And then he would go, tell me a story. <laughs> woo. <laughs> And I was, it was the there's, best. There's a. Uh, the Do you think he had a direct hotline to John Prine <laughs> or something? I guess. I mean, he kind of did because it was completely. It's you know, quiet. Like, like John Prine's would... literally like one of his you know fa famous songs, Sam Stone. The line is, "There's a hole in Daddy's arm where all the money goes." Like you know, it's not really the appropriate time to be like, "Woo, mm -hmm. fuck yeah, Skinner!" Like yeah. it's not. <laughs> But you know, it's like a weird time to do that. I love, I love those like uh, those those those, those Freebirds guys because they're always with silence. they're the free guy, the Freebird guy. Yeah, I, the one that I'm, I love the most was um, one of the. Uh, there's somebody that I knew that went to go see John Anderson, the lead singer of Yes. Uh huh. You know, a heavyweight of prog rock, yes. <laughs> and they went to they went to this concert at this place in Atlanta called the Variety Playhouse, which is in Little oh, Five Points. Fuck yeah. yeah, and between every song. There would be this guy, and he was like, he looked like he looked like the biggest parrot head ever. Like he had like a <laughs> Hawaiian shirt, big beer gut, and between every song, he would just yell, "Shit on my chest, <laughs> <laughs> shit on my chest." Because <laughs> apparently people would be like clamoring, like like play roundabout or play, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. one of the great yes, yes, many great yes <laughs> songs I, yeah. that I can't list because they're forty five minutes long and yeah. they're about Starship you Trooper mean this, Part there's A. There's more than one yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're about oh, on, the this, same one. This is a song. This isn't something he just wants done. <laughs> no, he, I don't know what, because there is not a song in the Yes Oeuvre called Shit, called on, my shit on My Chest. <laughs> and oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought I maybe it was that, some yeah. album track. That was like, I was like, maybe it's a deep, a deep cut. Yeah, it's like a, one of those deleted cuts from like Tales of Topographic Oceans. Where <laughs> it's just like, well, they did a lot of medley, so it yeah. might have been just part of like the <laughs> yeah. Starship. Shit on my chest. Or it's like a, it's like a inside a running gag amongst Yes. Fans. That's it's true. Like, that's how you know you really are a deep, a deep fan. <laughs> it's like if you know the callback parts to Sweet Caroline, if you know the in interstitials, yeah, you yeah. know you really know the shit. That's right. I saw. Uh, do you know the radio station around here, Jack FM? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. they had Jack's. I went to Jack's first show. Um, There's a Jack kind of, FM in every city yeah. in America, I think. Oh, tight. Well, yeah. <laughs> in Los Angeles, uh, I went to the Jack's first show, uh -huh. uh, and it was the Violent Femmes, Cheap Trick, Billy Idol, Journey, and Def Leppard. Uh, <laughs> what year was what this? The I know it was 2006. <laughs> that's a line. Okay, that's that a lineup that. Almost makes sense. Exactly. Well, that would yeah. be a pretty good Violent lineup. Violent really throw a kink in it. Yeah. 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 But it also, I feel like it makes sense. Journey and Def Leppard were on tour together, and it was right after they had gotten that new singer from YouTube. Oh, like the 13-year-old Filipino boy? Yeah. yeah. Or no, no, it was before that guy. That's, oh, okay. They had two yeah, lead was, singers. Yeah. There was a drummer who was singing, and then they had yeah, another. Uh, Steve Algeri. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think his name was. And But they were on tour together, so that made sense. And then, like, I don't know what everybody <laughs> else. I mean, you take out Violent Femme, but other than that, I mean, it's it, a pretty hot ticket in 1981. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was, that's, and the crowd reflected that yeah. but i my yeah. friends my friends and i who just graduated high school and we were like obsessed with journey yeah and so we we're like we're fucking going to this show right uh <laughs> did not disappoint steve perry might not have been there but it still felt like uh -huh. an authentic experience <laughs> um but the billy idol <laughs> billy idol was like a surprise uh great show because the the guitar player they were singing money money uh -huh. and you know there how there's that like pause in between where it's that duh, duh, duh. Mm. uh this guitar player every time there was that pause he would be like because i guess there's this callback thing that's like get laid get fucked yeah, yeah. in between <laughs> but he would like sing it 
And he was so it was like, here she comes now, say Mona, Mona. And he was like, motherfucker, get laid, get fucked. <laughs> like all the time, just these like variations. And it, I still think about it. And he was out there swinging it. Yeah. And it, was just, it was just like the, the most. It's the type of thing hard to wipe out of one's mind. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. So, like. It's one of those things you never know if you tell some if you recount uh, an experience if people are going to think it's funny. That's but it's amazing. one. It's always funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, I just it's singing its song and there's it's Billy be, Idol. Yeah. It's Billy always Idol. good for a few. Laughs. Well, there's got to be the one guy because that's t- you know the one guy's like oh, wait Tommy James and the Shondells didn't intend it this way. Don't yell that. Mm-hmm. You're desecrating the song. I actually can understand where that guy's coming from a little <laughs> bit. I think that you know Billy probably pulled it off. What I want to know is how was Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick was great. Did really? Rick Nielsen play the four neck guitar? Yeah. Fuck. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, they brought out all the fi- It was Jack's first show. They were bringing out all the fireworks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, once upon a time, Cheap Trick was the balls, but I have no idea what they were like in 2003 or whatever it's, it was. You know, it's Robin funny. Zander, the lead singer, looks the exact same. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I've never, I didn't see any of those people in their heyday, so I cannot do a comparison. Right, right. But I think with bands like that, like, you, you really don't care that much especially if you never saw them it's just like exciting to see it's like the idea of it and to like just witness them in concert in in the 70s cheap trick had this weird gimmick where the singer and the bass player were traditional like handsome like teen Mm -hmm. idol rock stars but the drummer and the guitarist dressed like intentionally like dorks like the drummer was a big fat guy wore uh, like a look like an algebra teacher wore a shirt and tie yeah bunny Bunny carlos yeah and the guitarist had that kind of peewee herman Mm -hmm. persona with his hats and because they were they were fucking rebels oh yeah they were the boss Thing. Yeah. I've always been a big, big Cheap Trick fan, actually, at least at first four records. I think they were kind of taking off of like Slade and other bands like that, where there was like kind of the weird, sort of different uh, personalities in there, where yeah. there was like the two people that were traditionally like good looking. Uh, rock stars, and then like there'd be the two weirdos. Yeah, you know, yeah. In the band. and they were the balls live. If you ever see like their '70s stuff live, they were the balls. Well, I mean, live at Budokan was like. But yeah, that big, thing was yeah. the balls. And and the famous talk about your callbacks. The did yeah. you see me crying? Cry, cry, yeah, cry. cry. Yeah. <laughs> I think people just like feeling like they're a part of the show. That's yeah. the, it's the same like imp- impulses like hecklers. Right. To that there, which I always yeah. think is funny too, especially at like a concert that it's like, do you think he needs help? He's got like a whole truck full of people <laughs> yeah. that have set this shit up. I think he's got it. <laughs> yeah. Like, Blow up your TV. Throw away your paper. Go to the country. Build you a home. Plant a little garden. Eat a lot of peaches. Try and find Jesus on your own. I went to stagecoach one year and I was that free bird person. Really? Wait, uh, you went to tell them what stagecoach is. Okay, stagecoach <laughs> stage coach is, uh, okay. is an interesting concept. I've been to stagecoach a couple times. Um, it's out at the polo grounds, right? It's out at the polo grounds. It's where it's they the do same Coachella. place as Coachella. Um, okay, not the old polo grounds where the Dodgers used to play. No, that's, no, 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 that's, that's uh, the New York Giants, but yeah. <laughs> uh, no, this is in, this is outside Palm Springs, Indio, California, Empire Polo Club. Um, and stagecoach traditionally happens after, the weekend after Coachella. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they have like, now there's weeks in between because they do, each of them have like three weekends mm-hmm. or whatever because it's blown up. Yeah. But it's just basically a country music Coachella and they have, uh, like Coachella, there's even tents where they have like lesser known country bands. But Stagecoach is not about the music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's definitely just an excuse to go get drunk in the desert. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they it, the party. It's really the campgrounds is where the the real action's yeah. at. Um, I w- how I explain it is that I went to Stagecoach and I did a beer bong out of a long flamingo. That's stage. That's, that's surprising because I grew actually. up in Florida and I never did that. that I thought me, that'd be like a thing that you have to do hey, when you graduate. I, to me, I'm high just school. like that's that's stagecoach in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. I milked the a cow start in the and West. Uh, flambangoed. Wait, you milked a cow? <laughs> yeah, they had like a little farm setup thing. When is this? It's, it already <laughs> happened. Yeah, it's always yeah, like it's, right after. But they Coachella. had it's yeah, it's right after. Is Coachella. it real hot? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's, it's always hot at these. California people, stop having your damn festivals in the desert. Some yeah. of us don't want heat stroke when we listen to music. Well, that's why they're going to have the that that 
upcoming one with the stones and everything. Old That's Jella. Gonna be, yeah, Old, old Jella. Jella. Yeah, and it's going to be in the it's desert. Gonna, but it's going to be in October when it's going to be like prime desert time. Yeah, but here's the thing. Remember we was talking about this last time? I thought that y'all could be like a bunch of old hippies and just get a van and listen to Can Heat and drive out there and smoke a lot of pot and crash the concert. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently you can't do this oh, kind of thing. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. It's... Yeah. it's uh, music industry is business, man. It's all about that money. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know, they've got coming up uh, here soon. It's uh, it's three days. Friday night is the Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Saturday night is Paul McCartney and the Neil who? Young, and then, and then and Sunday then, night is Roger Waters and the, and the Who, who. Uh, or who, oh. or as I call them now, Who Cares? A tribute yeah. to the Who. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm going home Sunday. I'd, I'm going to be honest. I'm there, I would be there two days, and then I'd be yeah. like, you know what? Two days in the desert, it's long enough. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but yeah. Anyway, people start calling it Old Cella. Yeah, uh, yeah I was just, hoping it'd be hot as balls. See, it's always hot as balls. They need some place like a wood stock here where it can rain and have mud and things in a festival. Altamont. I could well, do Altamont. You know, too. that's a good one because the stones are real good at that. <laughs> Altamont, Altamont 16. That'd be amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for it. I volunteer to kill somebody with a pool cue. <laughs> and they could have heard, a, it, heard it here first. And they, and they could they could even throw limp biscuit oh, yeah, in there to really like it, stir the pot. I mean, because that is good at that if someone was going to kill someone during a band, it would be during hey, limp biscuit. It happened already. Yeah. Maybe Woodstock I could 99, kill one of them, yeah. Fred Dunst, or one of them people in uh, <laughs> limp biscuit there, and then yeah. everybody would let me off because I would have performed a service for the world. Honestly. <laughs> so I was at stagecoach. And Darius Rucker Hell yeah. was performing. Yeah. Hootie. Uh, Hootie. Hootie, which is what I just yelled all. I just yeah, yelled course. over and over. Uh, Hootie, and only want to be with you. <laughs> oh, that was your free the, bird. Yes, moment. that was my. Yeah. And Does I think he... it's just because it's like for uh, speaking to my psychological state. One, of course, <laughs> we were just drinking. Yeah, but I think for that one, it was like I felt out of place because it was like a stagecoach. Situation, and so it's like a lot of pe- a lot of American flags, a lot of like uh, someone wore like a Budweiser suit. Yeah, yeah. and it's made out of beer. It's no like a Budweiser Print. fabric. Oh, that's amazing. And it's like people, and it's like people that it upsets me because it's these people that are like into country but aren't country people, but they just take away like the worst parts. Yeah, it's redneck of face. It. Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it's but, like you won't see a Confederate flag there, but it's oh, like, I bet the, you will. There's oh, I bet you would. But they oh, well, it's Molly High Historical, yeah, a hi- an That's, ironic Confederate flag. I bet yeah. you fucking anything for sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but so I'm like, I also need to like distinguish myself as not one of these people. Yeah. yeah. So what you do is by like just uh, making an asshole of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is this a hipster thing? Because everything out here is ruined by hipsters. Eventually, <laughs> sure. probably. No, yeah. no not stagecoaches. No. Not a hipster There's no thing. hipsters at stage. Although coach. now it's like they like it's a, girl. Well, it's becoming more and more like Coachella because now girls just it's like the anti. Uh, it's like I'm not like a flower crown girl. I'm a flower crown and cowboy boots yeah, girl. Yeah. Like that kind of yeah. Shit. So it's like for Orange County people, yes, exactly. essentially. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Yeah. Who so it's, it's like for. Orange County Coachella. Yes, uh, but the the best stagecoach thing that happened, and I've been talking about this recently because we've lost some uh, famous artists. Yeah. Uh, I the last time I went, it was Rascal Flats was like closing out the show, uh-huh. and uh, they were celebrating ten years as a band, which they mentioned over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah, um, and this was I don't remember what year it was, but uh, whenever whenever Osama bin Laden was killed, oh, because yeah, it yeah. happened while they were on stage, uh, in the middle of the set, the guy stopped and he was like, "All right, y'all, we got two things to celebrate tonight. Number one." Rascal Flatts has been a band for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, yeah, Rascal Flatts. And how many times did he said it at They'd that point? They've already said it so many times. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're like, yeah, we know. We've yeah. been here. Yeah. Uh, and then but he was like, and number two, we don't su- kill that son of a bitch, Bin Laden. <laughs> and then without <laughs> skipping a beat, everyone just started chanting, USA, yeah. Yeah, USA. Yeah. And it was the most beautiful. <laughs> I chanted. I was like, this is... You got to do it. 10,000 people left thinking that Rascal Flats was somehow involved in the death. (laughs) (laughs) I just like that he was like, hey, uh, I'm pretty glad about this Osama guy, but like, it's still our night. Number Uh, one. (laughs) Uh, You can blame them, though. It is their night. I mean, mean, they've been around for 10 years. years. Come on. And Come on. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you're Rascal Flats. You gotta bury yeah. the lead, man. Are they? You know? Are they the same thing as Hoopastank? No, no. Because <laughs> like, Hoopastank has something to Dennis, like a yeah, sandwich the Hoop or burrito. Yeah. What? Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, two things. First of all, we kind of denigrate this. There's parts of the country where Rascal Flats being around for 10 years is like a huge... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing that I know about Rascal Flats is there was a guy I went to high school with who got on American Idol, like on the, the tryout mm-hmm. section. Whoa, did you go to school with Bo Bice? No, no. <laughs> Damn it! No, because here's the thing. He, did, he, he didn't, Bo Bice! He didn't make it past the bad part of American Idol where they're basically like, look at this dumbass thinking yeah. he can yeah. sing. He didn't make it past that part, but he did have like a viewing party he was like yeah come check it out i was on american but he knew idol he didn't make it yeah and he goes up and he's like ha i was singing a song about rascal flats and he goes up and he's like well, when you c-? and he changed the name of whatever they say in the song i have no idea what the song is but i just remember him going well if you come down to auburn alabama you could blah, blah. and it was like and, and they just stopped him immediately and simon simon oh was just God. like Get out! Like, why yeah. would you have a viewing party if you knew how it all? They cut him off after like I, ten I, seconds. He was a martyr for Auburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. was a martyr for the plane. I, I went to, and there I, should have been toilet paper everywhere I, that I, night when he done that <laughs> on American Idol, and it became Auburn Idol for just a moment. I, there, I went to high school with a guy that was on the on the the dumbass reel for the original. Do you think you can dance? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my God, which guy? It was a. Uh, so he had, he did this like really spastic dance and he ended up throwing up in the in the garbage can. <laughs> The one thing I know about Rascal Flats is that they've been around now for over 15 years. Over 15 years. years. I got to tell you, man, they also they put on a hell of a show. It took me to church. We got to be there for the 20th. <laughs> yeah, who, to knows? Find who, yeah, who, who knows what enemy die? of the United States will be killed that time? <laughs> What are they going to do for the 20th now? Who, because we killed Bin Laden I mean, on the We 10th. got them all. It's, the world is safe. Who will it be? Maybe they'll just blow up the world after the 20th. So Rascal Flats, was a, was it a good show? Oh, like, yeah. It was a great show. It, it was They, they actually They, they actually, actually put on it. a great show. Also, the night before, Carrie Underwood had performed, and I wept. Really? I'm not even that big a fan, but I just was like... She was so good. <laughs> speaking of American Idol. Yeah. yeah, speaking of American Idol. One of the three actual stars yeah. that came out of that yeah. show. Tell you, she's got she's got a voice like an angel and I was overcome. Hey, don't talk don't talk crap about Clay Aiken. He's going to run for Congress. He already did and he lost. Yeah. I like Clay Aiken cuz he was kind of like a really gay Martin Short. <laughs> He was a superstar, and he got robbed by Rubens there, or whatever his name was. Stuttered? R- yeah, Stuttered. Clay Aiken had a very successful uh, Christmas album. So, yeah. and Ruben, I don't know what Ruben Stuttered has. He's been on, like, Where Are They Now? Kind well, of Ruben Stuttered made a, a critical error uh, in releasing his uh, his first single off of his record, which was he put the date in the name of the song. If you remember, his first single was called oh, that's Sorry dumb. 2004. That's right. yeah. Oh, my God. Dumb. And the chorus totally. was, I'm sorry for this is my 2000. Sorry. 2004. 2004. Yeah, oh which is God. oh critical error. I'm sorry for 2004. I'm sorry, sorry. 2004. You want to be timeless, like like yeah, exactly. Uh, which like is Carrie Underwood or or what's their name there? The wagon wheel people. I forgot their name already. Lasco Flats. Oh, Lasco yeah. Flats. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I felt sorry for 2004 myself. That was a pretty. <laughs> that was my senior year. Yeah, I felt sorry. I felt sorry for John Kerry, and you know. <laughs> oh man, that was a that was a rough year. I felt yeah. sorry for the New York Yankees when they went down to the Red Sox, <laughs> then the Cardinals. You went for the whole weekend. Yeah, I went. I think I've been twice for the whole weekend. Oh man, so, yeah. Uh, I, I always see the lineups there, and I'm like, it's not quite good enough to go. But I, I, I feel like it's probably more of the experience. The la- it definitely, it definitely is. And well, the last time when I went, I was like, I can't pay that much money to just like go get drunk in the desert. In the desert. Yeah, you yeah. Do, you that. do that for free. For free. Yeah, you yeah. Can do that for free <laughs> anywhere, or just like go to the desert and get drunk at a place and like listen to Rascal Flats on a jukebox. Right. Like, yeah. right. And especially experience. if it ain't hot as balls when yeah. you do it. Yeah. Sorry yeah. for the language, yeah. now, but that's what scares me about the desert is being drunk and really high and <laughs> baking my brains in the middle of the day when I'm yeah. listening to Hooba Stank or something. <laughs> So 
So you started dancing when you were young? So I started in like junior high. I did gymnastics before that. Okay. Uh, so I kind of had an aptitude for it. But my sister, I have a younger sister who's like seven years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And she was on that studio team that was all ages. Uh, but it was before I could drive. And so I would just have to go with her to practices and stuff. Uh, and so I'd be like, well, if I'm going to be here, I might as well at least like get a costume out of it and get to like <laughs> dance and do shit. Yeah. Uh, but I failed to realize that like all of those people like dance is like an art and it's training and you have to like do it for many, many years. Uh, but so I just like, I just like went hard, like dance classes. I would dance every day, like right. practice. Uh, and I finally, like two years later, I made the team and then I made a high school team or whatever too. But I didn't dance for a long time and I kind of have a chip on my shoulder about it. Well, I'm mean, like, I yeah. could have been the best. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I couldn't have. High but. school dance teams are kind of like peculiar because it's not like it requires you to be trained in like jazz or point or something like that. It's a well, particular it, sort of thing. Well, like, it depends on where you're dancing because some uh -huh. places aren't, but other places, like California dance teams, Southern California specifically, yeah. because now every all dance moms think that their kids can be famous right. dancers which also how many fucking famous dancers do you know yeah period like Joel Gray perhaps yeah, exactly. yeah. Twyla Tharp <laughs> Al Jolson yeah exactly <laughs> well I think like, a Jolson is the total package yeah <laughs> 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 but it's like we people don't even like watch music videos anymore. Yeah, like yeah. At, at one time there was like kind of a market for being a dance yeah. Yeah. professional. Broadway dancer, was but, really big yeah, and everything. But it's like now there's like not even a thing. The the only thing you really do is work in commercials. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. whatever. Like, and the only dancer that anybody really knows is like Misty Coleman. Or yeah, something or something like, like, that. like yeah. a and like the, a, the child from the sea of videos that makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever. But uh, but yeah, it's actually it's like very competitive. At my high school, there was a, a dance team that was really, um, that it was like cutthroat. Mm -hmm. It was like, mm -hmm. it was to what like Texas high school cheerleading mm -hmm. was like. This is yes. our dance group. But I didn't know if it was some sort of outgrowth of like quality or if it was an outgrowth of like, you know, kind of politics between mm -hmm. families sort of thing. I think it's a mix. I think it's a mix of both uh, from my experience, right. at least. It's definitely because you definitely like want to win and you want to be good. So it's definitely like who's the best dancer, but it's also like moms get involved with it. Like, you know that show Dance Moms? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. can't, I can't watch it because it's too spot on. Like, right. that shit is yeah. real. Not like the pyramid stuff. That's a little, like, I feel like that's a little what ramped is the up. What is the where pyramid? Where they would have, like, pictures on the wall and each week the kids would come in and would be like, Maddie is at the top of the pyramid this week. Oh, you Jesus. really worked it out. And then it'd yeah. be like, uh, but you four girls, you four little like mousy looking chicks, you're at the bottom. Uh, and just know like your your place here is in question. It's like that kind of, <laughs> they'd be like, you're not going to be in this front of the line dance. The one whatever, of the, but... the, Maddie is the one from the Sia video, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, Which is, I mean... It takes a lot to impress me. I've seen a lot of dance videos, but like she is very good. No, she's she's good. like incredible. She, yeah, no, she's know. good. She, the she, way she, it's presented is so like it's meant to be make well, you uncomfortable. I think that's right? the thing that I wish I want to bring, and maybe I will do something. I would love to bring comics to a dance competition because it's the most insane. Oh yeah, I think I'm most sure. of them are like they're like young girls, so I don't feel comfortable being like, hey, a bunch of dudes, come yeah, yeah. watch yeah, yeah. all these. But yeah. like the all the real young. Yeah. They're like they're real. Like it's eight. like real young to high school, but even even the high school stuff that it's like, people are dancing in like super, so they all love super women. sexual yeah. ways. Yeah. But then there's also this other thing that's like, and I blame so you think you can dance that people do dances now that like tell a story. So there was one like kid hula. who did a solo who, about a dead a child that had died like a baby brother and it, oh, it was Jesus. like it started in a rocking chair and uh, she had like a blanket and, and then like, she and she did it to pearl jams jeremy and it was like really <laughs> crazy. it was like great come on but then there's like the judges yeah. have to like give you have to judge that and yeah. be like um i felt like your showmanship was a little inauthentic like that it's like what are you yeah or it's like there's what so uh this sounds like it's like dance moms only now like institutionalized it, it, it's something. crazy it's insane <laughs> there's people they build big old props and stuff too and they'll be like uh someone will have like it's a bridge but this represents like bridge over problems like bridge over the waters but also bridge to the next side do they have bridge over troubled water or does nobody no, dance to would, simon and garfunkel no nobody dances to simon <laughs> that would be too that would be too uh although like, logical. i would love to see somebody do a dance routine to like the boxer or something like that because i would did it be, be hard strange especially yeah. during that trumpet solo it's kind of hard <laughs> <really work. laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. Uh, I have friends. I have friends still in the community. We could make this. Is, is the little girl in the Sia videos a better dancer than the girl in the Missy Elliott videos? Because I always thought she what about was different. Like, the beat she was awesome. I know her. <laughs> Um, actually, f- went to uh, grew up in Valencia. Same. Yeah. Really? A lot of child. We crank out child stars like you oh, know, yeah, nobody's yeah. business. Who, who all, uh, uh, who all you... Taylor Lautner, okay. most notable. Yep. Uh, star of uh, Star of Twilight. Oh, she's the one who sings Jacob. like all no. those songs on the Disney Channel, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Taylor Lautner is Jacob from the Twilight series, he's the werewolf. The, he's the uh, current he currently w- the star of all of Adam Sandler's Straight to Netflix. Yes, yeah. that's right. He, he was Another trained one. from a young age to brood really well. Yes, uh, yeah. I knew him back. When he was just Shark Boy, uh, but <laughs> what? Shark, like, oh, that like movie the indie Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Okay, a oh, friend okay. of mine, a friend <laughs> of mine, uh, his name's Zach. He's now in the army. Used to say, if Taylor Lautner married Taylor Swift, they'd both be Taylor Lautner. That's so that's so a true. shout out to Zach if they, he's listening. Hey, Zach, that's very true, and I like it. They famously Taylor Swift when Taylor Lautner was dating her uh, were photographed by the Paps uh, at our local Olive Garden. Mm. Hey, wait, in Valencia? Mm-hmm. They went to Hell Olive yeah. Garden? They were running a PBR promotion or something? Yeah, man. Nah, man. You, can't, uh, you really can't escape the suburbs. No, you really can't. It's a never ending. You can't. It's not, you, it's a never from, ending pasta ball. Yeah, the <laughs> soup salad breadsticks. Come on. $11.99. Is it good Italian food? No. But is it great? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can it fill your stomach? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to eat unlimited anything, I don't care about the quality of that product. Right. It's yeah. unlimited for a reason. That's like, why that's, CC's pizza is amazing. Yeah, it's, you're not. I'm not yeah. going there to like take take part in savoring the craft. You yeah. know, I want cheap, fast breadsticks and salad. Uh, but Taylor Lautner, Ashley Tisdale from the High School Musical movies. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. David she's, Gallagher from she's Seventh, legal. Seventh Heaven. Mackenzie Rossman, also from Seventh Heaven, used to ride horses with her. A wow. lot of Seventh uh, Heaven went me, to your school. Uh, yeah, yeah. it's just me name dropping. Yeah, yeah, that's where we. No, get to this, this is great. <laughs> both little kid, both yeah. music, uh, Missy Elliott, little kid dancers. The yeah. little boy, Lil. C, I know him, his mom and sister, actually, they're in the dance team Mm -hmm. world. They have a studio now, but they were also the coach of my sister's high school dance team. And then Allison Stoner, the little one. Yeah, yeah. Missy L.A. girl, uh, another, you know, it's a small world. Wow. (laughs) So you grew grew up in in Valencia? Yes. Yeah, and that's... Basically, Magic Mountain. Yeah, and Cal outside, Arts. Outside yeah. Cal, Magic Mountain, Cal Arts. That's how, whenever someone asks where it is, I say it's Magic Mountain, or uh, we are the inspiration for the town in Edward Scissorhands. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That's true because Tim Burton went, Tim Burton to, Cal went to Cal Arts. Yeah. It's, it's up on a hill, uh, just like his castle oh, okay. and all of that. And it's very true too that like the Cal Arts people don't really associate. Yeah, my my wife, it's my that wife town went to and Cal Arts, yeah. and. She was just like the only time we went to Cal Arts was to go to the El Torito. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? you go. Yeah, you go there and you go to there. It's not there anymore, but there used to be a great bar called Mulligans down yeah. the hill. My dad used to be the pastor at the church across the street from that <laughs> Mulligans. <laughs> what uh, denomination was Lutheran. it? Lutheran. Okay. Yeah. Almighty Fortress is Frozen Chosen. chosen. No, yeah. they, no, but they made uh, Davy and Goliath, and I yes. consider that a great service it's to the world. It's true. My my dad actually was part of trying to get that uh, a reboot of that. Oh, no kidding? Yeah. yeah. You know, if, if Daddy, if you're listening, we like the old one because it's mm-hmm. real good to get high and watch it at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I still learn a lot about God from it. They, yeah. I mean, it's it's a great product. I don't know. It was that. that. I was... don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh, they, well, the reboot of that would be insane because now it's like, you know, I don't know, Dave, you shouldn't be cooking meth. In the yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Dave. I don't know. The internet has a lot of bad stuff on it. <laughs> I wish I, I Oh, you should details. put that on your MySpace page. <laughs> You're getting too competitive about this dancing thing, Davy. <laughs> I wish I'm I could do it Davy style. To do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it Davy style. Yeah. Or doggy style, you figure, because they got Goliath there. And you can yeah. Do, yeah. When you got something to do, do it doggedly, is the way I put it. <laughs> <laughs> Also, yeah, nobody your ever... dance moves, if you're made out of clay, your dance moves are amazing. Oh, oh yeah. look at Gumby. He used yeah. to oh, yeah. own the floor. Yeah, he slide, yeah. Her, he slide yeah. around. He's yeah. doing splits and... Yeah. yeah. Splitting in half and dancing with himself, yeah. you understand. <laughs> like, 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 like Billy, Billy Idol. Idol. Yeah. 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 Hang with Goop. Whoa. 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 Wow. Uh, in the industry, that's called a callback. That is a, yeah. <laughs> Thank the, you. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I that I knew... one of them. The, the other thing I knew about Valencia is that like it's completely... The polar opposite of Cal Arts, like yes. like those oh, two yes. places, 
Like for it being in Valencia, it's like completely the opposite of what yeah. Valencia is like. Uh, well, I guess when it started, um, I because I so I grew up in Valencia, and there's a bu- it makes no sense because there's a bunch of colleges there. One of them is a very Christian college, so it makes sense that that would like be straight laced, but it's not a town for young people yeah. at all. But I hang ended up taking classes at this community college and then hanging out with some guys who taught there, but mm-hmm. they were all CalArts graduates. Yeah. They told a story once about uh before before Valencia had like been built up the way that it is now. There was just like fields everywhere. And uh one time one of the teachers had they just like camped out in this field, a mm-hmm. bunch of CalArts people and there was this guy who came and they just had like a week in this field. It turns out that guy was Charles Manson. Yeah, I was, I was like, about to say the like guy that was kind Charles of shit. Man. So it's like it used to be that kind of place because yeah. it's like off beautiful. It, it, there's still like hiking areas or whatever, yeah. but it's like it's totally like Manson territory. Yeah, Spawn yeah. Ranch kind of Simi Valley. That is where Spawn Ranch is. Soon it's the yeah. same kind of terrain and all of that. But yeah, it's just a bunch of strip malls and. Uh, it's a suburb for like below the line Hollywood people to mm-hmm. come live. So it's all production. So most people live, most people work in the business. Uh, oh, so we get strip malls, suburbs, entertainment business, and Charlie Manson. Yeah. Sounds uh-huh. like and, the total package of really Southern is. California. Car- that's why they call it Awesome Town. I like the sound <laughs> of it. I have it's to true. Admit. That's a campaign that they did uh, for the city, a marketing awesome campaign. Town. Awesome they called it Awesome Town. Town, and I read a piece on it, which is this is one of my favorite things. Uh, they were like, "Why? How did you come up with that?" They're interviewing like the ad agency, and they're like, "Well." Uh, you know, we interviewed a bunch of people who lived there and we asked them, you know, what they liked about the town. And, you know, it just that word just kept coming up. They would just say, you know, awesome schools, awesome restaurants, awesome, you know, awesome ta- people, whatever. Praise. And they were like, yeah. Yeah. and they were like, awesome town. That's yeah. it. Awesome town. There's there's little TVs next to the urinals at Beef of Brady's. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> I like the sound of it, though. I mean, they're not terribly articulate there, but no, I mean, that, that is... could happen in a lot of cities. You forget how many awesome town or bitchin' get... town and such things would there be? It's, it's, it's to the point. <laughs> bitchin' town. Bitchin' town. <laughs> Ebor City's Hell bitchin', yeah. dude. It's bitchin' town. Strip clubs, bitchin'. <laughs> if you're a guy, they're bitchin'. If you're a gal, they're bitchin'. <laughs> if you're in a guy, it's in the guy's Bitching. And the guy from the Chamber of Commerce yeah. is like, uh, it's pronounced Bitchington. <laughs> <laughs> Get our, out of here, dude. You're not being bitching. Our horrible microbreweries, bitching. <laughs> our hard rock casino, bitching. <laughs> Bush Gardens. Uh, hell yeah. Hard rock cafe. Hell yeah. Bitchin. Calarts is starting to bleed out, though, a little yeah. bit into the town because we're they're starting to get kind of, uh, there's like a, a restaurant now that's has like Edison light bulbs and oh, craft yeah. beers oh, boy, and that, all yeah. the people there work. They haven't like quite got, it's still like a suburban yeah. uh, impression of a restaurant like that. Just like that industrial chic kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I could never understand see. that. It's like come in here and pay a lot of money to look at a place that looks like a hundred year old gutted tenement with yeah. <laughs> light bulbs from the Grover Cleveland administration yeah. hanging yeah. on the wall. Absolutely. The second it's one. It's Dust Bowl <laughs> chic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you know, a Dust Bowl chic is fine with me with Dust Bowl prices but they're not gonna match you know i pay some money i want like a good toilet up there and like you know when you would go to pizza hut or something like this a nice little <laughs> light bulb that you could unscrew secretly when it was too damn bright because yeah. i don't like bright lights in my face the thing that i liked things. about the thing that i always remember about cal arts from like what my wife's stories are like is that it was clothing optional for the yes. longest time and it was always, but it was like even if you only, worked there, yeah, it was always a select. So it could be like the naked professor. Yeah, so but there was, was, but it was only about Marbury select, versus Madison. Was everybody? It was always at? a select <laughs> few guys mm-hmm. that would do the clothing <laughs> oh, optional thing. Yeah, there was always like the old guys that would use that to be able to sit in the jacuzzi naked. Mm-hmm. And there was one guy that was like one of the holdouts, and apparently he came in to argue about his tuition. Like he came in like to argue about, his, <laughs> but naked. And uh, and well, the, he couldn't afford it. Yeah, and look, well, yeah, like, I'm, like, I'm really broke uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, school okay, is expensive. Yeah, and the, the administrator like got. No wonder so, it's clothing optional. Yeah, yeah the the administrator got so like weirded out by this guy who's like naked yelling at her about the his like tuition or whatever that she had passed out. 
much. <laughs> yeah, and that and that they or basically she got were too like, excited. Oh yeah, and then it. they basically were just like, okay, if you're going into the administration buildings, you have to cover yourself up with something like yeah. a sock. And so we put a hat a on cloth or something. Yeah, and that's when CalArts went to shit. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> well, you know, instead of an awesome town, why didn't they just say Valencia, clothing optional in some places? <laughs> well, that's because they don't, they're not proud of that. They don't they don't they reject CalArts as a they keep it up on the hill. You know. Okay. Well, usually but when I think they, of up on the hill, I think of something like a city of God, not a place where people go and yeah, no, this to is argue a place about where their you tuition. Go, you, could, you don't have to wear clothes, and you can make experimental films. And uh, yeah, but it doesn't sound as much fun as that should be because it sounds like it's just all old dudes wearing no clothes <laughs> and not no. nice well, young, no, you know, clothing young optional ladies. cheerleading teams. Or no, something. it's not that kind of thing. But also, but that's what the the art world's like. Yeah. It's just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What did your Get wife, out of here. What did your wife say? I'm study? being silly. Uh, experimental animation. Okay. Yeah. All right. She's talented. Actually, so, Valencia sounds like a good old time, I have really, to say. You know, the, the older I get, the more I'm just like, what are you going to do? It's a nice place. It's There's parking lots, and it's clean, and there's a lot of Mormons. <laughs> okay, that's a drawback. Uh, but we know there's a Lutheran presence. Them, them there's Mormons a love them deserts. They do, Something they, about the desert. They're used they to it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They've got fried brains. <laughs> Natural habitat. Uh, yeah. a big, big Mormon community out there. Also, Valencia, fun fact, uh, swinger capital of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the more... Wait a minute, it's not a dry town, though, if it's Mormons, right? No, it's not a dry no, town. No, no. And it's not It's not a... It's just like passive-aggressive uh, morality oh, okay. from Mormons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can be they, high they all the time, right? You can be. They don't. It's hard to, you know. It's there's not a lot of nightlife stuff. Yeah. But you could, I mean, grocery. That's why it's you still California. Go for the, that's why you got to go for the swinging, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine with me. I was at a bar once and I had a guy hit on me, and he was like, "I probably shouldn't be here," or whatever, like be, trying to be mysterious. And I was like, "What?" And he was like, or he, I asked him what he did, and he was like, "I'm kind of like Batman. Like I, I do a bad <laughs> thing, but like it's for the good of the people." He fights crime at night. <laughs> that's. I was like, "What?" I was like, wh- "I was like, okay, so I was." like what you I was like you're like a lawyer or like you work for a a big corporation that shit like big tobacco yeah, yeah. or something <laughs> I'd be lucky to like, get me some free cigarettes I was like you sell drugs like what and he was like no he was like I'm a gigolo yeah, and I was like, fuck. Yeah. I thought he said it's a <laughs> bad awesome. thing. That's yeah, awesome. But he was yeah. like, people hate me for it, but like, this city needs it. Anybody, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, anybody that All like, right. it's not you know. the '80s and you're a gigolo. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or ba- it's not you know Renaissance Italy. Yeah, I feel just, bad for gigolos because they're like their career, like their job has been. <laughs> gigolos get lonely too. Morris yeah, Day get, said yeah, this, and their <laughs> their careers have been you know marginalized and stigmatized since Deuce Bigelow male gigolo. I know, which I've always hated. Terrible. Because the redundancy of that title <laughs> drove me nuts. Although yeah. a female gigolo, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but know? gigolo but is, is an inherently a, male word. Are you just a, like a call girl then? Or No, or, no you're yeah. a mistress or yeah. a courtesian. A but lady gig- of the night? But <laughs> gigolo is an exclusively male term. So male gigolo is like saying male bull. It's just redundant. <laughs> Well, I mean, it presumes that there's female gigolos, and if they, hey, those they're not called gigolos. They're not called gigolos. Yeah, they're yeah, just they're called just, a but different they're, thing. they're pushing yeah. for they're pushing for you know equality. Feminist just, movie, Deuce Bigelow. Like, yeah, gigolo. exactly. That's awesome. You know? Forget for pushing for equality. I'm going to say right now, I'm throwing my hat, uh, not my long one. I'm keeping this one, <laughs> but my hat into the gigolo ring right now. <laughs> if there's any retired dancers around Valencia that ain't too old now, because yes. that that is the trick. The trick with being mm-hmm. a gigolo is you have to like older women, but I'm going to be a gigolo for 35 and under. So if there's any <laughs> there 35 a- and under want a cowboy stud, you understand? <laughs> You know, just pay my gas to Valencia and all this. Buy me a hamburger or whatever. We'll I'll bring a bottle of Rianiti or something. And <laughs> we'll watch TV. I feel like in busy. certain areas of Valencia, there's a woman out there that would uh, respond to this. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, different parts. Do, we get, do they get, do they hear this in Valencia say, Rivers? If you're, if you're in Valencia, any listeners yeah. in awesome tweet at town. us. Yeah, at, at Goodnight Daddy if you want to uh, send yeah. something. Directly. Send me private yeah. messages if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The good, I accept them. Please, girls only on this. Yeah, at, at the good spot if you want to. Uh, uh, solicit the entire show. Oh, yeah, and, and please have an ID because apparently a lot of these dancers are going to stand there in high school and things. <laughs> Gonna do, baby. 
Well, I went to college in Orange County for oh, okay. a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Chapman in Orange. Okay. Uh, and so I lived there, and then I moved back with my parents. I dropped out of Chapman. I've dropped out of Chapman twice, once online, once in person. Thank okay. you. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I ended up moving into, in. Uh, let's see, I don't, like 2011, I moved to Laurel Canyon. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. With with my boss and her daughter. Uh, and the three of us lived in a little treehouse bungalow, you know, just working, working for an acting teacher Hell and just yeah. like wanted to get out of a small town, <laughs> a small suburb, <laughs> moved to the Canyon. Uh, the canyon was not as much like I thought it would be a lot like Cal Arts, uh, right. but it was not. Yeah, okay. yeah. If you're listening, you don't know Laurel Canyon is a uh, is a neighborhood that sits just above Hollywood in the in the hills in Los Angeles. And uh, during the 1960s, Laurel Canyon was where all the big rock stars used to live. So yeah. everybody real from, happening place. Uh, you know the uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young famously all met there at Joni Mitchell's house, which is uh, you know, Linda Ronstadt, Linda Ronstadt, Jackson Brown, the Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles. Know. The Eagles were just like the, the dudes Papa. that Carol hang out. King. Carol King. Carol King. Carol yeah, King. King. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah, yeah. the King. Eagles were like the young boys. They would like fetch beer for Jackson Brown because oh, he was underage. Have you watched that? Speaking of that, have you watched that Eagle History of the Eagles I documentary? Have. That three hour long. I, I actually have. Oh. Yeah, and it was my favorite part is where they're they they are like, yeah, man, we heard the James Gang broke up. We're like, we should just hire Joe Walsh to come sing Rocky Mountain Way at every show. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah, and that's how we got in the Eagles. Was they literally were like fanboys of like, yeah, that guy kicks ass. Let's get him in the band. But then they ended up with Joe Walsh around, which is not a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he track. wrote in the city and all that. I stuff. mean, it's great. Yeah. Uh, the best part, the funniest thing to me about that documentary is it's just like a showcase of how that band was just a bunch of lead singers right. that like made it work. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I can't believe, I can't believe we only lasted ten years. I'm like, I can't believe you lasted one. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's a fucking your drummer was the front man. <laughs> Egomaniac. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and I, that's what? the the drummer front man is the most is a is a monster. Unless it's, it's Levon, it's going to be a toxic uh, even. Situation. But that's well, because Levon he's a could crazy... sublimate his ego for the good of literally the band. Yeah, yeah. True. he's crazy because he was never allowed to like get out of control the way Don Henley was. Yeah, yeah. Don, once you, well, once you I mean, would you? Oh yeah, the singing over. drummer like that. When you have an ego like that, and he's pissed because he's behind everyone See, else. But he really wants to be in the front. But his job is literally just sit in the back and keep the band together. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if you let things go too out of control in different directions, you'd end up with like the the Eagles playing Smugglers Blues. Sure. You know? Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. it's it worked. It worked, and it's perfect. Or just the Joe way Walsh is, and his. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with either of these That's scenarios. A big ten <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm big champ. Remember that one? <laughs> it's horrible. from uh, that's from his solo yeah, album. Yeah, life is good. Yeah. It's just like, oh, geez. I love, I love just that. different layers I keep of on going, but I never know why. <laughs> that, that band is just different layers of terrible. Every time I hear that song, I have that little chill down my back. Like, I'm really high, it's 2 a.m., and I have the classic rock FM yes. station. Especially on. that part where it just goes, boop, doop, 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 what, 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 what? It's that it's that he plays to Peter Frampton. He yes. plays Peter Frampton's instrument at yeah. the end yeah. of it, and his instrument makes funny. Whoop, whoop, no yeah. one's this like. Yeah, well, I, I just, get, I get it. I but. imagine like the the recording of that song, like where that came from, was just like the the backup musicians come into Joe Walsh's apartment, and he's like passed out in the big pile of cocaine from Star uh, from Scarface, and he's just like. Yo, check out what I did on this keyboard. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> just, just like completely just yayoed out the of his thing mind. With me with that song is Joe Walsh must have come in and said, Hey guys, I've got enough riffs to make an album with, but I'm gonna put them all at the beginning of one song. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's Laurel Canyon. Yeah, so Laurel Laurel Canyon is uh uh yeah, it's a neighborhood in LA and basically uh, up until nineteen sixty nine, until the Manson murders, mm -hmm. it was very, very popular for musicians to live there. And as soon as the Manson thing happened, Every celebrity in town freaked the fuck out and bought a giant house with a big gate and everything like that, and it kind of killed the party up there. That's what uh, I like about Manson. He was sort of the social equalizer. Like that. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, but he did, uh, have a, he did have some points there. He did, yeah. and he was real competitive with Not the girls too. It was like dance moms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'd be like Linda Kasavian's on top of the period this week. Yeah, yeah he'd be yeah. like <laughs> Leslie's on Su- top yeah, right Su- now. Susan, Susan, sexy Sadie, you need to get on it. Get on the top. Get where Leslie's at. Squeaky, what you go to do to get on top? <laughs> I didn't realize he was Wolfman been... Jack. <laughs> this is Charlie's pyramid of greatness. Nah, he was. It would have been much softer. Uh, whenever, yeah. whenever you listen to those like reenactments of his, he always has like a soft like. No, yeah. Now, uh, Linda. Yeah, uh, the Beatles Linda? are talking to Charlie. I'm just you waiting. better step oh my it up, god. Linda. That, I just listened to that. Uh, you must remember this series. It's about amazing. All, oh my god. Yeah. That, the part where they talk about how that when they went to the desert and they had like fur covered dune buggies yeah. driving yes. around yes. is the craziest. Yeah, there's a <laughs> yeah, po- there's like, a podcast uh, hosted by Karina Longworth called "You Must Remember This." Yeah. And if you guys are into true crime at all, holy shit! Listen the, to that Manson one. There's like, like a 13 12, part 13 part Manson episode. It's so I'll be, good. Manson knew how to have fun. I'll be honest with you. There's uh, <laughs> people who are obsessed with serial killers. I'll be blunt. They make me sick. Except for Charles Manson. Yeah. Every guy secretly wants to be Charles Manson. Just living out in the desert with a harem of hippie girls, just well, giving you drugs and calling you God. I wouldn't have wasted time murdering people. He just, he just, he's the ultimate, like, it's a Hollywood failed actor story or, like, failed right, musician. Right. And it's just, like, someone... It's it's perfect. Yeah, it's I mean a, it's not it's awful and nothing like squeaky. Not, well, yeah, I yeah, think what it, I think the reason he got violent is he brought the prison ethos to the outside world. But also yes. also he had like Tex Watson hanging around and he yeah. was like nuts. Yeah, somebody. Well, see, I wouldn't allow the Tex. I'd be like just the pretty girls, please. <laughs> well, also he came from a long line. Like he just couldn't he couldn't do anything different. You know, his yeah. dad. He just was following the family line. You know. Yeah. Hey. He, uh, squeaky, let me tell you something, Squeaky. <laughs> I never told anybody this, but since you're at the top of the period, I gotta tell you, I hate Helter Skelter. My favorite song is When I'm 64 on this White Album. <laughs> Why come he talks like romantic. James Brown? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Get on up! Also, <laughs> whenever, whenever you see any musician, like old musician that's playing at like a restaurant or something, playing covers at a restaurant... I've come to the realization in LA where it's like that guy probably has a Charles Manson story. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like he was hanging out at Terry Melcher's place. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you know Manson came in. We and Pat, Pat and I went one night to this. Uh, there's an open mic out in Studio City called oh. Cleo <laughs> Cleo King's Open Mic, and it's what? <laughs> oh, do you not? Where is it? Oh, you need to go. Oh, we have all right, dude. I will. Uh, th- it's the best. Cleo so, King's open. Cleo mic? King. Cleo King. From what I gathered, is one of those people who, if you go on her like IMDb, uh-huh. she has like a thousand appearances yes. in the like late. You know, lady number one. Yeah. Lady in background <laughs> sipping tea. Number two. Secretary. <laughs> Secretary. Yes. Like she's one of those people that's been here for like fifty years, yeah. just like you know being in stuff. And uh, she uh, runs this open mic at a theater. Uh, I think it's called Two Roads Theater out in Studio City. Mm-hmm. You go in and they have a theme song for the mm-hmm. open mic. Okay. Uh, and like, so you go in and they're about the mic. About the mic. Yeah. So you go in and like everybody's okay. packed in and it's a mixed mic. So it's comedians, poets, <laughs> musicians. Median age sixty four. Yeah, <laughs> and and it's funny because it's the so the song is uh, they have a chant first of all, and the chant is uh, we create. And we support. I got your back. I got your back. <laughs> That's Fuck the thing. Yeah. And they chant yeah. that shit over and over. And then they start the music, and the music goes in with the chant. And then there's this like very gay Asian guy who like sings. He's amazing. He's like, amazing. He's, he's like, like, the, like he's actually like funny. I'm like, why isn't this motherfucker hitting mics? He's yeah, hilarious. Why isn't this guy like the? I've biggest never seen star him anywhere else. But he comes in and he has like a whole rap about how the mic is like you know this magic place and all this shit. And, oh and then he God. brings it back at the end with the we create. And we support, like, he brings it back at the end and everything. Like, I, I saw it, and my mouth was agape. I was like, this guy is, like, yeah. a charismatic wizard. He's really wizard. doing something yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's really moving the needle, guys. Yeah. He creates <laughs> and he supports. Yeah. But, but this I mean, mic, he's, he's the best of all time. But, yeah, this mic was just a bunch of, like, there was uh, me, Pat... Keith Kelly. Keith we, were, Ke- we were the Ke- three. Oh my God. Did oh my. Keith Kelly destroy Yes. Us? Keith Kelly destroyed. Yeah. I, I was half expecting like bras to fly on stage yeah. because all of these like 60 year old women. Kelly. Thought it's Keith like a Tom Kelly, Jones show. Yeah. Thought yeah. Keith <laughs> Kelly was 
the greatest of all but, time. But the show is like there's a you know there's people reading poems. There's like uh, old people from Laurel Canyon playing guitar, which sure. is what reminded me of it. But then there's also like old people doing street jokes. Yeah, and yeah. well, that's why Keith Kelly would murder there because it's funny if you're just if you just like those kinds of jokes, then he's telling. He, well, that's the just thing pulling is pulling like, on your heartstrings. But then if you like get the next level of it too, then yeah, it's yeah, even funnier. There's, there's Maybe just, Keith Kelly should become a gigolo from the sound <laughs> of things. Yeah, he was up there and he was like, "Yo, I've been really getting into." Tap water lately and all the women were like ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh but my god it's, let me tap that tap, tap. water <laughs> it's so <laughs> but yeah it was just like old people doing street jokes yeah. so if you just sort of had a vague idea of how to do comedy you would kill like yeah. it, it's like i haven't gone back specifically because i did so well i was like i'm gonna just save yeah. this till i have all new jokes and mm-hmm. then i'm gonna go back because it's just like it's just sh- fish in a barrel out there but yeah you have all these like old like, you know people from laurel canyon who come down from the mountain to sing their folk songs mm-hmm. and stuff uh what was it like living in that na- in that neighborhood though like you have uh uh did you have any cool. like leftover hippie neighbors and stuff like that um yes there was a guy who would always be naked uh we had <laughs> there's like, a lot of that Hell um yeah. We Hell so yeah. our our we had this great super cool like patio was on top of like the detached garage uh-huh. um, and there was like literally a bridge you would walk over and it was like wooden so it was very hippy dippy that sounds like the uh, it rem- uh, reminds me of like uh, the long goodbye or yes, something like it's that it's like it's that, that same kind of idea also that's a great um, if you're listening those steps uh, Hollywood Tower steps go right by that apartment and you can see into it it's very tight oh that's uh, awesome anyways uh, but we would look up and this guy would always come out and he would lay out on his uh, like deck <laughs> On his balcony, and he would be naked, and he'd have like a surfboard. But he was like a. Uh, but there was no water. He was just no, naked was with just, a surfboard. Just, he just had a surfboard on the on the balcony out there with him, and he would just lay. He would just sun. Uh, but I think he moved uh, when I was moving. At one point, I went up. I think it was his house. I've seen. I think I have seen him with clothes because he was having like a yard sale. Yeah. Uh, with just the weirdest shit, like two beautiful like steel guitars. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it was like weird comic, uh, like not even comic books, like just like old magazines. Yeah. So there weren't a lot of like, clothes at these yards. Not sales. a lot of clothes at okay. these yard sales. But <laughs> no, we had that. We had uh, now it's like wealthy. That's the stuff that it's like a lot of money in the canyon. And so, so now like, wealthy, but not naked. Not naked. A lot okay. of clo- a lot of clothes. A lot of passive aggressive notes on cars. I don't know which is worse, to be honest with you, because I've been like. I would be, uh, just leave a note saying, dear sir, can you please get a girl to do this with you so I have something <laughs> to look at during the commercials when I'm watching Sanford and Son? It was see, it's not. It wasn't that entry. It was just like it, when you're outside. It wasn't just like naked. Well, all yeah. Time. I mean, if I had the you know, if I had the you know, the land to do it and the privacy, I'd be going outside and shooting in the back naked. Oh, there was also <laughs> I forgot about this. And this is like not funny, but I just remembered that there was also a couple that would fight so loud. Uh, I'm pr- I'm fairly certain we called the police, but we can't. You can't tell. You can't tell where anything's coming from in the canyon because it echoes yeah. around. So we'd be like, we're trying to like help this woman, uh, presumably. Uh, but yeah, where is the echo like, oh, coming Jesus. from? You call the police, and they're like, uh, we're like, uh, can we get a scientist out here to determine where the echo the canyon, is coming from? Uh, <laughs> So Laurel Canyon was a uh, it was like a resort at one point, right? When they first built yes, it, yes, it's you used, there were you had there was like a train or something that took you up to the top, or it will take a long time. Yeah, uh, a funicular, yeah, something like that. Yeah, the little two way train. Uh, but yeah, so there's it's like super old. Uh, they haven't done anything to the plumbing uh-huh. <laughs> in like a hundred plus years. Yeah. Uh, so whenever it rains, it always gets like really bad floods. <laughs> uh, and there's like we had so we had a toilet over flow and like the sewage backs up it's like that you have to have like not a septic yes you have to have a set like septic system yeah, so yeah it's like right, billion right. dollar homes that have yeah and you have to like systems. yeah you have to flush like yeast down the toilet yes in order it's to, that yeah. kind of that kind of thing so we had that happen and i had to call at the time i was living with my boss where i was her like assistant so i had to call a plumber and she just kept saying there is raw sewage everywhere and i just had to keep, just like tell them there is raw sewage Raw sewage. And I was like, I don't know. Okay. I can't imagine cooked sewage being yeah, any well, that's better. What I, was like. but... I, think, I, think, I think we get it at sewage. But uh, it, that was gross. Uh, then there was a time when uh, it was just like real heavy rains. And I lived in like the bottom part of the house, which was like a finished basement. So it's below the main part. And it was raining so much that my room flooded. But it was literally like Titanic. Like it was coming in under the door. 
Yeah. Like just yeah. water <laughs> flooding in. And my I went up. I like I remember I was watching Game of Thrones. And so I thought I just like heard noises, but I just assumed it was like on the show because I was like, <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it was raining, and I'm like, ah, I, you know. Whatever. Good thing you weren't watching Titanic or yeah, something. I know, I know. Right? holy well, shit, then, this stuff's real. Like, this is a little loud, so I like looked over and I was like, oh shit, this water is just like coming in. <laughs> so I just kind of like grabbed towels and I was just like, all right, let's see how long I because it's like late at night too, and I didn't want I'm. I didn't want to bother anybody uh, you know, like, <laughs> with, your, yeah. so like, with your drowning. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm sure I could handle this. Uh, so I like put towels up. You can. not it's, yeah. it's still coming. And then I'm like, fuck. But, but also I have to walk upstairs through the rain and everything too. Uh, but so finally I go up and I'm like, uh, guys, like, um, like my room is flooding. And then my roommate and I literally had to start bailing water. We had buckets. Yeah. It's like pouring down <laughs> because it was the way it was set up to is like the drain, the storm drain was also just pouring directly down into my little like entryway. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So I, it ended up being like, you were in the bilge ankle, tank, ankle yeah. deep water. Yeah. Wow. That happened to a friend of mine. My friend, uh, Devin, he lived in a, in a shed. Mm -hmm. He lived in a tool shed in Reseda. Yeah. And <laughs> same, same. <laughs> Similar, Com similar circumstances. Comedy open mic all star Devin Blake, uh, and he uh, <laughs> and he like it happened to him. Like yeah. he was, he called me like randomly, and he was just like, "Hey, my uh, yeah, my place is flooding. Uh, it's all the way up to like halfway up my box spring." And I was yeah. just like, uh, "Dude, get out of there!" And he's like, "What?" Are you, uh, uh. The other time was when he had like possums invade his his <laughs> shed. Mm -hmm. Like the baby possums came in. Oh. And like he was trying to help them out, and the mother possum was Jesus. just like, "My baby's getting met," so she just like tore up all this stuff. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, we yeah. didn't have possums, but we did have a skunk problem. Nice. <laughs> at one point, and the uh, my boss and her daughter, they had a dog, and the dog kept getting sprayed by the skunk. Yeah. And so it would run through the house, and the whole house just. And skunk. then you had to hit it with the tomato sauce. We had we had that. We had, there was another one. We had to look. I know. I know how to make like the skunk yeah. death. Not yeah, tomato there's, sauce. There's like it's like there's detergent like, and baking soda. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's kinda. something like that now. They say. But we better, had to call. A, we had In to call my day, we used the tomato yeah. sauce too. <laughs> <laughs> All we mean, had was hints from Heloise. So, uh, you know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've seen it on PBS. Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. They talked about this. We had to call a a. Critter Wrangler to come like, oh, set traps. Oh, dude, I love Critter Wranglers. <laughs> That's yeah. such a fun job. <laughs> it is. They had to set traps, and they put... First night, they put cat food in there, because apparently skunks love yep. cat food. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they were like, you'll hear the like sound. Like So just like check the traps. And the first night, a cat got stuck in the trap, but they you have to like unhook it. But this cat was fucking furious. Yeah, yeah. So I had to do it, but we had like a yeah. broomstick. We're trying not to, have to like step down on a thing and then it pops open and but I'm like terrified this cat's going to like jump and attack my face. Right. It didn't, thank God. But the critter guy came over who was Kato Kalen? Who was Kato Kalen? Uh, no, I believe his name was Jeremy. I have his card still. Uh, but he came over and you could smell him as he like turned the corner. Yeah. The like he was wafting, just skunk everywhere. Oh, Jesus. Uh, but he came in and he was a, ni a nice young man, reeked of skunk. Interesting scent you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he all, we asked him, we were like, how does your, because he mentioned uh, that he was married and our landlord was there with us. And he was like, how does your wife feel about this? Smell. Well, he she has like, no olfactory no, glands. No, he was like, he was like, oh, she doesn't. You can't even smell. He's like, you know, once you just like take a shower, it's gone. And we're like, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> like that's in, that is like in you now. It's permeated all skin, all clothing. Yeah. But so he his came, wife probably has dark black hair with a little white streak. <laughs> yeah. <in it. laughs> She is a skunk. She well, he probably covered, he probably like bathed with patchouli for so long that she or likes to like change something. Or he yeah. he doesn't have a wife. He just wants people to think that he's not a skunk smelling monster. Maybe yeah. he's one of them shape shifters yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, a like a were skunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst like animorph of all time. Yeah. The were skunk. The wear if he's an animorph, though, he's probably saving the world. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So you can yeah. take the smell, my, but he my, was late because. He was rescuing a family of baby possums out of a barbecue, and there was a he was filming a reality show. That's why we were late earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you were also filming your reality show. No, but we were rescuing the baby possums. Oh, that's yeah. cute. Yeah. Which, of course, yeah, because in the even, you know, even in yeah in L.A., even the goddamn guy who smells the guy like who a smells skunk, like skunk, has a fucking <laughs> developmental deal. Yeah, yeah, smell a vision. It's gonna be the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wake up, you're like, oh, that show's on again. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> 
On the internet, uh, I am at Julia Loken uh, on Twitter and Instagram and those spots. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, you can uh, follow us on uh, uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash the goods pod. We're on Twitter at the goods pod. Rate, review, subscribe. That is the best way you tell can a friend. Tell a friend. That's or the- die. <laughs> well, don't die. Well, if you do die, at least subscribe so we continue getting yeah, the, the download. Uh, actually, I've got to. If you don't subscribe, I've got news. You're going to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you do subscribe, you'll die too because it's inevitable for all of us. But there's no <laughs> falsehood in our statement if you say. If you don't subscribe to Goods from the Woods, mm-hmm. you're going to die. Mm-hmm. So find us on iTunes, and uh, yeah, if you write a, you know, if you write a write a review, that would uh, that would really be nice. We we'd love it. Helps us out greatly. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, do all that stuff, and we will see you next week. The Goods from the Woods was mixed, edited, and distributed by me, Rivers Langley. You can find the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by DJ Smiles. Check him out on Twitter at DJ Smiles. <laughs> <laughs>